Hey everybody and welcome back to LRN. Today we take a more in-depth look at the Canadian Grand Prix and how everything played out over the course of the race and why people finished where they did, who the best drivers of the day were, who needs to step their game up moving forward and who might even have their seat at risk. But first of all, I want to cover off the breaking news from yesterday evening after the race um, that Alonso was given a five second penalty for weaving down the back straight, which dropped him from seventh to ninth place overall in the standings. I already said that I think he's probably going to be the most frustrated driver of the day um, because of the way he was caught out on his strategy, because he didn't make the most of the VSCs that were available to him, or at least the team didn't. They didn't bring him in on the two occasions they could have to pit for uh, fresh tyres under the VSC. So, and then he had issues with the car uh, mechanically towards the end of the race with an issue with top end speed. He even then he felt he was a hundred times quicker, quoting him there, um, the, than Ocon, and he still should have been allowed past Ocon. They didn't do that, so he ended up having to defend from Bottas, and because he was weaving on the straight, and he essentially to cover the fact that he didn't have the top end speed, the FIA gave him a five second penalty, and he dropped in the classifications from seventh to ninth. I can only imagine he's going to be seriously annoyed with his team today we know how Alonso can get he's definitely um become less uh, aggressive um and you know more um even tempered with age but the real Alonso is there and I suspect that you know the competitor is there and he will be airing his grievances with the team um over the next few days because they cost him a really good solid finish today whether or not he could have taken the challenge to the Mercedes I, I doubt I think they did genuinely just have the pace on Alonso even if he got the strategy right but he certainly should have been ahead of Ocon um, and certainly well clear of trouble behind him at least until of course the safety car sort of brought everything back together um, and the fact that he obviously hit that safety car period behind Ocon because of what they'd done with the pit stop strategy completely ruined his race and went on to cost him the position um, and drop him down to ninth with that penalty as well. So he will be really, really upset. If you've seen the clip, um, let me know what you think. Do you think he should have got five second penalty? I think it's quite clear that he was weaving. He did definitely make more than one defense um, down that straight. So I don't think he can really complain, but it will just add to the frustration. I think the frustration he was already feeling was displayed in the fact that he weaved knowing that he can't. So it's only going to compound how he's feeling. But anyway, we'll get straight into it. Um, we'll kick off with Red Bull. So I already announced yesterday that um, Max Verstappen was my driver of the day. Um, did just a really solid job. Um, so he had a really, really good getaway at the beginning. Um, immediately clear of Alonso. Setting the pace from the front. Um, made decent progress. Um and pitted under the VSC um, when Perez DNF. So obviously Perez suffering that DNF on lap 10, bringing out the first virtual safety car. Verstappen took the opportunity to pit. Um, and there was also that fear at that stage of reliability issues for um, Verstappen from the team because obviously they'd just seen Perez DNF. So they were worried about maybe pushing the car too much potentially for the rest of the race um to, they didn't want to have any engine issues with Verstappen they needed to get him to the end of the race but it didn't seem to to affect him too much I, it didn't appear either that they asked him to slow down at least not from the radio messages I heard um getting onto lap 34 starting to complain about tire grip um he then pit for the hards on lap 43 came out behind lewis so he was next to lewis on pit exit lewis managed to make that stick he was not happy about that but he did get that a move made on Lewis before the end of the lap down the back straight um, so he was you know in the end of the day he, he got past quite quickly I don't think it cost him too much pace um, or time in the race behind Lewis um, then because he'd only just pit for tyres or well, seven laps prior to the safety car obviously where Sonoda um, had crashed on pit exit uh, he would then stayed out where signs had come in under the safety car um, and then Verstappen as we know held off signs for the rest of the Grand Prix for the remaining laps 
um, held off signs for the win and what a phenomenal job he did of that it, it was great to have the pressure and the excitement of signs putting the pressure on Verstappen for the rest of the race I must say I did feel like he could get him but it was quite clear that there just wasn't enough of a pace advantage from the Ferrari to make the move on the straights you could see the traction that Verstappen was getting on the exit of the corners more so I think than the Ferrari um, and that alone just gave him enough of a gap by the end of the straights that signs just couldn't get close enough to make that dive so fair play to Verstappen drove with a really clear level head today showed a mature performance something he hasn't always done in the past but really really good performance from him obviously as a whole the, not the best day for Red Bull they'll be hoping to come back stronger from a constructors perspective because while they Verstappen's increased his lead at the front uh, they did slightly, you know, cost themselves a few points from a constructor standpoint. Perez not finishing, um, and with Ferrari finishing both high up in the points and Mercedes as well. So obviously, it doesn't put them in a, in a massive predicament. It's bad for Perez because obviously Perez would have been hoping to keep the fight to Verstappen in terms of the drivers' championship. Today won't help that. It won't help Perez keep the pressure on the team to make sure they both get fair crack of the whip when it comes to the drivers' championship. Um, so we probably will end up having to hope that either Mercedes can step up and bring a fight before the end of the season or um, Leclerc and Sainz can get on form and start beating Verstappen on track to bring themselves into that drivers' championship fight. But certainly for the constructors, um, I think it's good for the sport that Perez um, didn't actually finish again because we don't want that constructors' championship fight to be concluded too early. But great drive from Verstappen, well deserved win. Um, and he'll go into the next race, as always with him, to be fair, with a bucket load of confidence that he's going to get another good result. Um, moving on to Ferrari. So, kick off signs. So, signs uh, overtook Alonso on lap three, was struggling for enough pace to make overtakes um, without the DRS. So, once the DRS opened, he managed to get the move done on Alonso. Um, stayed out under the first virtual safety car um, caused by Perez. Um, to get the lead ahead of Max Verstappen, who had come in, but he then pit onto fresh hards under the second VSC, um, and then pit again under, <coughs> and actually came out, obviously he was uh, still ahead of Max at this stage, um, but pit again because he got a short stop, pit again under the safety car, decided to go with the fresh tyres and attack Max from behind, as we know that didn't work, um, and he, he, although he obviously put a lot of pressure on Max, came home in second. Leclerc got a decent start. It took him a little while to get through the pack, but so from got from up to 13th um, or by lap, uh, what was it, lap sort of 7 or 8, he was up to uh, 13th, managed to get himself up to 11th on, on lap 19, uh, taking Albon and then quickly making another move on Bottas into the top 10. Uh, made another pit stop though on lap 42 to the mediums, putting him back into the pack, uh, but then stayed out under the safety car because he'd only pit eight laps prior. Um, so that allowed him to jump all the way up to seventh under the safety car. Uh, and then he managed to get both Alpines before the end of the race, obviously too far back to catch the the Mercedes but they had good pace anyway so bringing home fifth Re interesting weekend for Ferrari obviously they would have been hoping for more the penalty for Leclerc really really hit them um, but Sainz would be really happy with his performance it wasn't the win that he'd hoped for but really really strong day for Sainz um, he'll be hoping to build on that and, and get his maiden win for Ferrari before too long Leclerc obviously unlucky again with the penalty but to come from 19th back to fifth with Mercedes, you know, a, a, a revitalized Mercedes um, obviously they had struggles on Friday but for the Saturday and Sunday um, yeah Mercedes look great so for them to come all the way back with Leclerc to finish fifth and Sainz to push Verstappen all the way to the end um, you know, question, he could have potentially won it. They feel like they had the quicker car. Um, so you do call into question if they genuinely believe that. Did they get the strategy wrong? Is it just that the safety car came out at the wrong time? Could they have genuinely won it? I think, yeah, maybe if they got luck of the draw and maybe made a different decision on the strategy in hindsight, they maybe could have got the win. But I can't really question any decisions they made. There certainly wasn't any glaring errors from Ferrari that they've had previously. So I'm pretty happy that they did all the right things. Um, and that they can move into the next race a bit more confident, happy with their pace, happy with you know the the, the team um, and the decision making there, and move into the next race confident of another good result, but certainly in need of again beating uh, the Red Bulls in terms of total points gained over the next few weekends. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Mercedes um, again, good weekend for Mercedes. 
you know, for them to look so strong after all the issues they had last week. As you know, we discussed the race this week was always going to be a bit easier for them because it's a much smoother track it's a genuine racing track not like Baku that's really bumpy and it really really made it too turbulent for that Mercedes it was bouncing off the ground for the whole of the Baku Grand Prix much much nicer on the cars in Canada so that certainly showed in terms of their performance but I definitely think there's performance gains on top of that as well um, but we have seen Mercedes look good in the past this season so we'll see if they can continue that into the next few races but Hamilton pit under the first virtual safety car while stuck behind Alonso didn't have the pace to get past um, but you could see that he was definitely looking a much happier in the car um, he managed to get in front of Verstappen as we mentioned earlier after running long on the hards until lap 43 so managed to get in front of Max. Max didn't have the pace to beat the Mercedes. That showed uh, or come out in front of the Mercedes, which showed how good the pace of the Mercedes has been compared to maybe previous races. Not forgetting they've been lapped in the past this season uh, by the Red Bull. So definitely a massive improvement there. Um, he then came in two laps later after Max had got back past him. So lap 45, which meant he came in only five laps before the safety car. This meant he could stay out while everyone else pitted. Um, and managed then to restart behind the safety car from a comfortable third position and bring home a podium with Russell defending from behind. Don't think Russell genuinely had the pace to, to take Hamilton today. Again, no sign of um, team orders there. So a, just a brilliant performance from Hamilton. He'll be feeling much happier in the car, like they do have something to work for this season, potentially that he hasn't felt so far. So really, really good. Happy for Hamilton that he's had a good race. He will be ecstatic to come home ahead of Russell. You know, I know that he's always trying to be the, you know, the, the moral person and out like nothing gets to him out at least out when he's not in the car but he's going to be really really quietly happy that he's just got ahead of Russell for a race he needs to build up that momentum um, and I suspect that he will build on that in the next few races Russell will be sat there fighting happy with his performance so Russell um, made really good progress actually obviously starting in eighth but quickly got uh, behind Lewis up making a few positions up to p5 he then pit under the second vsc um, and then pit again on lap 46 again just behind similar strategy to lewis just before the safety car came out which Sonoda caused around lap 50. Um, so he allowed again to stay out that allowed him to come in uh, behind the safety car in p4 and just follow Lewis all the way home. So solid race there from Mercedes. They've got to be really happy with their day um, and performance. So starting fourth and eighth and coming home third and fourth is a solid day, obviously helped by the DNF of Perez um, and the additional pace over the Alpines, but really solid job from them today, or sorry, yesterday. And they'll be, again, trying to build on that into future races and obviously with the difficult thing for them will be on the street circuits where the bouncing becomes a problem again can they stay within the new FIA limits for bouncing and at those tracks how much will it impact their their performance how different a car will we see around different tracks with that Mercedes because at the moment it doesn't seem like they can they do have the the confidence in the car that it's going to turn up at every track uh, which is why they're trying so hard to try so many different setups every time they turn up to a new track on a friday because they just don't know how their car's gonna gonna behave so they've got to try everything before they but they fall on the right strategy but good solid weekend from mercedes going on to mclaren um so again we see with the mclarens both struggling for top end speed norris today not having his best race of the season but not all his fault at all First of all, he came under the VSC caused by Mick, um, so on lap 20, and he had a 9.5 second stop, so really, really long stop, um, which dropped him back into the grid. It then turned out he had a mechanical issue that was causing him to have three tenths a lap deficit um, to the car, well, to what he should, should have been setting. That meant he just couldn't make the overtakes that he needed to make um, to make his way through the pack. And that meant that he could only come home for a 15th place finish. He just couldn't get back into the race today. So Norris will be definitely happy to forget the race uh, and move on into the rest of the season. We know how good he is, but nothing went his way today. So we'll look forward to better races from Norris in the future. Ricardo had a bit of a better day of it. Um, so Ricardo starting up in... I see him. That's weird. 
Ah, ninth. So Ricardo starting up in ninth today. Again, the McLaren struggling on the, for, for speed on the straight, so he didn't have the pace to make the overtakes, and he was sometimes a sitting duck with faster cars on the straights behind him. I say the one lap pace wasn't too bad, but just in those DRS zones, he just couldn't make up the positions, especially in a DRS train. He just didn't stand a chance. Um, so he got stuck in a DRS train for quite a long time. Um, also starting on the hards went long on the first stint he then pit under the safety car um, for his first stop of the race so only the one stop and then missed out on points because he got overtaken got overtaken by stroll um in the last few laps after the safety car restart to lose out on that final points place so ricardo bringing it home in 11th then stroll getting the solitary point in 10th so not a great day for mclaren not a track that's working for them as things stand they do not like these long drs zone straights they're glad to get to more tight twisty circuits um into the latter stages of the season where their car definitely seems to work a lot better especially in this fight with alpine in the constructors championship so definitely want to look out for but as things stand the alpine definitely looks the stronger car they will need to make some improvements and improvements quickly if they are going to take the fight back to alpine and maybe build up that gap again because after a no points finish today they're down to a handful of points ahead of alpine at this stage and alpine looks set to move past mclaren if not the next race then the next two for sure unless mclaren can make some serious upgrades so let's see how they fare over the next few races alpine interesting day for alpine for sure so alpine we'll start with alonso um slow getaway for alonso off the line but he did manage to retain that second place and uh, for straight hamilton behind hamilton not quite being able to have the pace to get get past alonso um so hamilton obviously did end up pitting from that position um however he ran really long on the first tire not pitting until lap 29 so he missed the vsc opportunities on lap 10 and 20 uh came out behind ocon after his pit stop because ocon had taken the opportunity to pit under the virtual safety Safety car so he came out behind but on fresher tires so without the safety car on lap 50 you feel that alonso would have made the move on fresher tires or they would have moved ocon out of the way as team orders however both cars pit under the safety car which meant ocon on the same tires came out ahead of alonso and ocon wasn't suffering from the mechanical issues it turned out that alonso was as well um, and alonso was therefore told to hold station not fight and come home in seventh place however he did fight bottas obviously got that five second penalty and actually has been classified as ninth so bad day at the office for alonso after what was an incredible performance in qualifying to come second on the grid so not the day he was hoping for i personally think that he should have been coming home today in fifth with the dnfs that occurred and for him to be actually classified ninth is going to be horrendous ocon however will be the happier of the two drivers so Ocon obviously starting in seventh, finishing the race in sixth. So did make up a position mainly due to the DNF of um, Perez and also of Magnussen um, not finished of getting uh, damage early on in the race and dropping back as well. So decent race for Ocon. Didn't really make up any uh, any positions, but he didn't do anything wrong. Um, he again as i said he pitted under the vsc and then again under the safety car getting him ahead of his teammate um and of course magnuson had dropped back and pair as a dnf so actually he didn't he didn't make any moves he benefited from the strategy um and i say i don't think he did anything wrong not not an amazing drive but you know didn't do anything wrong so he, he brought home a haul of points and alpine will be happy with that i think it's a fair position coming home in uh sixth considering the speed of the car as it stands but again they're going to be um, not particularly happy with that result given the performance that they had and you kind of would hope that they'd finished further up the grid i think alpine with alonso starting second were probably more hopeful of a larger haul of points to go home with this weekend so i certainly think there'll be some slight disappointment but not a bad weekend in their fight with mclaren the fact that McLaren didn't finish in the points will definitely make them feel better about the total points gain they've had from the weekend. 
Alfa Romeo, I thought Joe was pretty impressive. Um, the Alfa was clearly lacking straight line speed as well. Not as bad at the, you know, at the level of like the McLarens, but not as good as they would have hoped. Um, ended up getting stuck in a DRS train behind Lance Stroll, who was running really long on the hards. <coughs> um, ended up getting a bit frustrated, and you saw that play out on um, in the way that he was driving, locking up the brakes, going deep in the corners. You could see that he was just getting frustrated when he was getting stuck because he did have the pace to go quicker than the people in front. He just simply couldn't get the, the top end speed on the straights to make the moves. <clears throat> so he came home for ninth today. But as I say, I think for Joe, as a, in his rookie year, he's looking, he's getting better and better in the car, more comfortable in the car, and showing why Alpha wanted to bring him into the team. Bottas didn't have a great start to the race um, so given a black and white flag for not rejoining safely after the, when he missed the chicane at the end of the lap um, so he hit the board and he got a black and white flag as he didn't follow the instructions by the race director um, then <clears throat> made a decent move on Albon later on on lap 19 um, into that same chicane um, which was a really, really good move from from, Bo uh, from Bottas. So good to see him making decent overtakes when a Mercedes for a while it did seem like he you know he couldn't make that move. He's certainly looking more comfortable in the Alpha when he's got the pace to to really feel comfortable in, in making a few dive bombs and doing things that we kind of wish we'd seen a bit more of Bottas doing in the Mercedes. Um, but again, we know that car was designed to be at the front, not necessarily following. So it's, it's an interesting discussion, but I think he's definitely showing why... <clears throat> Mercedes hired him in the first place um, all those years ago from Williams. Um, so Bottas found himself in front of Joe after the virtual safety pit stops, um, but then pit again for um, under the safety car, stayed ahead of Joe um, and came home for eighth position. So a decent weekend for Alfa Romeo, another team that will be hopeful of trying to catch up to the back of the Alpine and McLaren in front. Probably McLaren given their current form um, and they've they've outscored McLaren this weekend in terms of points. So they can't complain about that. I think the cars in front of them were too quick for them um, and similar pace cars they've managed to beat. So they will be happy with that weekend in my opinion. Haas, probably the saddest story of the day for Haas, qualifying an awesome fifth uh, and sixth with Magnussen fifth and Schumacher sixth. I think with if we kick off with Schumacher, just feel so sorry for him. Um, you you just think he was finally on for some points in Formula One, <clears throat> running a good race, fighting Joe at that stage for seventh when his engine gave out. Um, and obviously he caused that second VSC. So it should have been or a, a story of what could have been for Mick Schumacher um, from the Canadian Grand Prix. Definitely one that he wanted to, to finally put to bed those points and establish himself more in the team when rumours are starting to swirl about his position in Formula 1. So certainly he's going to be unhappy and I do feel really sorry for him um, because it's not his fault. I think he would have had a really good race today. Magnussen, on the other hand, should have had a good race, clearly had pace in the car, um, got obviously that damage at the beginning uh, with that collision with Mercedes or with Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes when he was trying to fight to get past. Um, Lewis obviously successfully defending that position. Magnussen picked up the damage on the side of his wing. He was then forced to come in with a black and orange flag. They forced him to make the change to the wing. At that stage, he got dropped way, way to the back of the pack, um, right at the back, and he couldn't make those moves. I don't know if they had any underlying additional damage we weren't made aware of, but he didn't have the pace to make the moves for the rest of the race. He came home last in 17th of the remaining runners. So yeah, disappointing weekend for Haas. After such a fantastic showing on the Saturday, you felt like it could be another Bahrain for them, like a really strong weekend, and it just didn't play out that way in the end. Not all of their own doing. Um, so yeah, really, really disappointing for both Magnussen and Schumacher, but I think they'll come back stronger. We've seen that there are, at certain tracks, that car just works. Um, they haven't always got the pace, but when they do, that car is really, really strong. Um, so as long as that Ferrari engine as well holds out for them, I suspect they're going to have at least a couple more opportunities this season to have some really, really good points on the board. So we'll look forward to that and hope, uh, fingers crossed, Schumacher can finally score some points before the end of the season and hopefully sooner. 
Aston Martin, um, so Stroll, decent race, I think, actually. Um, he, he did a good job uh, on the hards, making them go as long as he did. So he didn't make his first stop until lap 48, which is seriously impressive, even on the hard. I think that is seriously impressive. You know, we're not talking about the hardest tire on the compound. We're talking about the middle range of the Pirelli. He made it go 48 laps on full fuel load um which i think is really really good yes he did hold a lot of people up and he was causing a bit of a train of cars but he didn't let them pass he held them up and he allowed him um in the end when he pit under the safety car he's managed to come back um and then overtake ricardo towards the end of the race under drs to get that final points position and get a singular point for aston martin for the weekend which i think is really really good for stroll normally when you compare your people to especially stroll has been having a lot of issues a lot of incidents this season um let's give him credit where it's due i think it was a solid drive from stroll today if you look at vettel hardly saw him throughout the whole race he was busy trying to catch up to the back of the train that stroll was actually creating um he ended up coming home in 12th after capitalizing on uh, the dnfs um you know and the issues that Haas and, uh, and red bull etc um so he managed to come home in 12th so no points for vettel today again showing that stroll had a really good race at his home grand prix so congratulations to stroll on getting the point for the team Aston's obviously not got the quickest car at the moment. I definitely think that there's a, there's a potential in that car. Um, so let's see how they get on for the rest of the season. But Stroll, who definitely needs to be justifying his position in the team, decent race from him. Williams, um, so Albon again showing what he can do, definitely proving to be a Russell-esque character. Really good in the qualifying of that Williams and having really good race days as well. Um, obviously not finishing in the points today but you can see he's got the pace in that car he is maximizing what that car can do and that is all you can ask of your drivers um so obviously got the, the, the issue for album was he was actually running as high as 10th he got caught out because he pit one lap before the um the second vsc so he got really caught out in that strategy so he came in had a full 25 second or sorry a 17 second pit stop phase and then everyone else pit a lap later and only took nine seconds additional to their race so really really big hit that dropped him way back into the pack he didn't have the pace in the car to make the moves to get back in front so he couldn't come home any higher than 13th if that hadn't happened if he just waited a lap longer you have to feel that he would have been the one maybe to get that last position and get in front of stroll coming home in 10th place which would have been great for albon and williams wasn't to be but no fault of their own completely unlucky you can never time these things it was just the absolute wrong moment for that vsc to come out for albon and williams so he could do any better than 13th latifi hanging around the back hardly saw the guy came home only ahead of magnuson he's gone i'll just be clear he will be gone at the end of the season i'm 99 percent sure that he will be being replaced by nick de at the end of the season he has not been able in the seasons he's had with albon and um russell to show that he's strong enough to have a permanent seat in that car so do expect latifi to be moving on at the end of the season completely like the guy i think he's brilliant you know really really nice guy and he's definitely someone that's liked around the paddock but he there's only so many seats in formula one and there's only so many best drivers in the world and he just isn't quite to the level required from what he's shown so far in his career to justify an ongoing seat in formula one i think that's similar to stroll strolls obviously has a few more you know races here and there where he can point to and go look look what i can do i don't think latifi's had those he had a couple of races where he seemed to be on pyro russell last year but generally speaking and the, the incidents and the constant problems he's having creeping into his races he he's definitely going to be the one to go um at the end of the season so keep an eye out for confirmation of nick de Vries, uh replacing latifi at williams next year uh, and finally alpha towery so sonoda obviously having the embarrassing moment of the day coming in uh for his pit stop and crashing into the wall on pit exit still not seen anything to, su to suggest that there was anything wrong with the car other than him just not getting it right on the exit i think he was trying to carry too much speed too eager to get back onto the track and he just lost control of the car put it in the wall so not what you want to see from sonoda but 
thankfully for the fans and a few of the other drivers as well that's exactly what we needed to spice up the race so he took the hit there caused the safety car caused the excitement for the last 20 laps or 17 laps of the grand prix once the safety car had come in so i'm happy about that but really embarrassing moment for Sonoda. definitely one he's going to want to forget but he has had a good season it's one of the, it's just one of those moments you know he, he's still really young still learning let it let let him have it it will happen to the best of us you've seen it happen to people like Grosjean constantly who you know is a much more or was a much more um, experienced driver than Sonoda so certainly you can't say too much about the fact that he's had an incident like that we've certainly seen better drivers than him have similar problems so he'll come back he'll learn from that and he'll have strong ideas uh, stronger days I do think that there is a very talented driver in Sonoda so let's see how he progresses for the rest of the season Gasly again not just didn't see much of him started 15th came home 14th just had a bad weekend don't know what, what was wrong with the car whether it was setup issues whether he just wasn't feeling it couldn't get used to the track the, the car just didn't suit him this weekend um is i think it could be a bit of everything um but definitely a weekend to forget for gasly um and he'll be looking to be a bit more resurgent in the next few races as he gets back to form because we all know how good gasly can be so certainly for me a really solid race canada happy to be back at a proper track i enjoyed baku but i think <coughs> the canadian race was really good i think the safety car added some spice i think there were some really solid performances out there headed up by max with the win and the pole position obviously alonso smashing it and i think the best performance in qualifying but just couldn't get it done on race day not necessarily due to his own fault but because of how far he fell back and that five second penalty i don't think you can give driver of the day to anyone other than max verstappen on this particular occasion i think hamilton's not far behind either fantastic drive from him just beginning to end showing why he's a champion just no issues at all definitely a race that he needed and russell as well not put a foot wrong just you know similar pace to hamilton once he got past the cars behind really really good race and there's a few others as well but definitely verstappen was driver of the day for me and another race i really enjoyed love going to canada going to canada i think it's a great addition to the f1 calendar so i hope you all enjoyed it too make sure to let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed about the race what you like about you know any particular moments from the race that you enjoyed anything that you think i've missed um who was your driver of the day if you are new around here do make sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified of all future uploads we have multiple uh, videos each week and previews and reviews of each race uh, in the f1 calendar so do make sure you're subscribed to be notified of all future uploads but otherwise i'm going to say i hope you have a great day thank you so much for watching goodbye